This year, TYT has been making a lot of moves. Now you can too. Now how are you going to do that? You want to launch a new business? That sounds fun. You're going to change careers. Jesus and Lord mercy. You're going to need a website for all that. Lucky for you, Squarespace also making moves. You're going to go to squarespace.com slash TYT. You're going to get 10% off your first purchase. And you're going to get to build anything you want on that website with a unique domain. What are you, crazy? Go do it now. Go. What would it take to roll back civil rights protections for gays and lesbians in America through the court system? I recently spoke to the nation's Sarah Posner about one important ingredient, money. Posner's expose investigated the funding sources and activities of Alliance Defending Freedom. I also asked her about the crucial Supreme Court case that ADF recently argued on behalf of a Colorado baker who refused to serve two men who wanted a wedding cake. That led to litigation under the state's uh, civil rights law, public accommodations law, which prohibits discrimination on the basis of race, sex, gender, ethnicity, and sexual orientation. Uh, so that case got litigated all the way up to the Colorado Supreme Court, and the cake baker lost. Uh, and they appealed to the Supreme Court to say, can you decide whether uh, I can say that notwithstanding this civil rights law in Colorado, that I have a First Amendment right to refuse service to this same-sex couple and refuse to bake the wedding cake for their wedding. So a lot of our viewers have a difficult time wrapping our heads around an argument against civil rights protections yes. for gay and lesbians. Yes, so what is Masterpiece Cake Shop arguing in this yeah, case, exactly. right? So they're saying that Jack Phillips, the owner of that Masterpiece Cake Shop, the, the bakery in Colorado, is not merely a baker. He's a cake artist. There's such an artistry to his work, they are arguing, that it is compelled speech by the government to make him serve a same-sex couple for their wedding uh, when that would violate his deeply held religious beliefs against same-sex marriage. And as I report in the story just a couple of months ago, on the other side of the Capitol where we're standing now, mm -hmm. uh, five members of Congress, five Republican members of Congress, stood with Jack Phillips and his lawyers uh, and announced their filing of an amicus brief signed by 86 members of Congress wow. in support of his argument. And there, Republican members of Congress talked about how it was really scary that the government could make somebody essentially speak in this way. Now this flies in the face of the entire purpose of our civil rights laws. Our civil rights laws on public accommodation, you know, starting with lunch counter protests in the 1960s up until now where we're seeing the addition of sexual orientation and gender identity to protected classes is about the dignity of all people to be treated equally when they go to buy a cake for their wedding or go and you know eat at a restaurant or whatever the public accommodation is beds and breakfasts, uh, you know, hotels, everything. It, it covers a, all of these things. There's a case in the 60s that they're actually trying to find a, a way to work around. Tell us about right. that case. Right, so that was a case called Piggy Park Barbecue, and the owner of this barbecue stand said that he had a religious right to refuse service to black customers. And in that case, he used the defense not only that it was his religious right to do that, but that he served black customers for takeout, but he just wouldn't serve them inside his sit-down restaurant. Because interracial dining was against his religion? Yes, uh -huh. essentially, yeah. yes. I mean, you know, it sounds ridiculous now, but that was his argument. Uh, the case went up to the Supreme Court on, on an attorney's fees issue, on the question of whether the plaintiffs in that case should be able to recover their attorney's fees. And because the court found that his arguments were patently frivolous, the plaintiff was entitled to their attorney's fees. So they don't have a very strong free exercise argument, but unlike, say, the Hobby Lobby case, which involved a federal law, which was easier for Hobby Lobby to prove a religious infringement under the federal law, here they don't have that federal law to invoke because it's a state law that Phillips was sued under. It was the state civil rights law. So they have to make a free exercise claim, and it's just not that strong. And so they've resorted to this free speech claim where they're basically saying application of the civil rights laws to a cake artist or whatever kind of person you want to 
transform into an artist um, is compelled speech by the government. And according to the members of Congress who are supporting Jack Phillips, that's a really scary thing, the idea that the government would be telling you what to do. Okay, so real quick, why didn't they sue Masterpiece Cake Shop under federal civil rights law? The federal civil rights law does not protect based on sexual orientation or gender identity. That's not something that has been added to federal civil rights laws. And only about less than half the states uh, provide protection to people based on sexual orientation and gender identity against discrimination in public accommodations. And so for your piece, you read over 140, was it 143? 146 federal and state appellate and Supreme Court briefs that were filed by Alliance Defending Freedom, Masterpiece Cake Shop's attorneys, the Christian Right Legal Organization that's representing Masterpiece Cake Shop. Right, because it's very expensive to bring a case to that building there, or even federal and state courts. So somebody has to be funding this idea that Americans have a right to discriminate against gays and lesbians. Alliance Defending Freedom, which was founded in the early 1990s, was founded on the idea that the freedom of Christians and the freedom of Christianity in America was under threat as LGBT rights advanced. And so you have to understand the context in which they decided to found this organization. They saw in Colorado, incidentally, um, uh, litigation and political act activism around a law that would have prevented, a law passed in Colorado that would have prevented localities from adopting this sort of uh, anti-discrimination law. That case went all the way up to the Supreme Court and the Supreme Court struck that law down, said it violated the Equal Protection Clause. So the founders of ADF were very worried about the advance of LGBT rights. And so they talked about this early on. One of the founders of ADF and its longtime president, Alan Sears, uh, wrote two books. One of them was called The Homosexual Agenda, mm -hmm. uh, which goes into great detail about how he thinks the homosexual agenda is going to infringe on the freedom of Christians. Basically Fox News except for only focused on the gays. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty much, yes. And he also wrote a book, The ACLU versus America, making the argument that the ACLU is an anti-American organization that seeks to restrict the freedom of Americans as well, opposed to the other way around. You wrote that there's a farm system that kind of asks young lawyers to read these books yes. to prepare them for this culture war. So ADF sponsors what's called the Blackstone Legal Fellowship, which has grown a great deal in le recent years. It started in the early 2000s with just a, a couple of dozen law students. Uh, to date, they say that they've had 1,800 law students go through this program. It's a summer program where the law students go and they have seminars and talks and opportunities for internships and really brings them into not only ADF's ideology, but also into the conservative legal world, opening doors for them for internships at conservative organizations or even at law firms, even uh, you know, clerking or interning for uh, government agencies. And now two judges. Trump nominees for the federal judgeship. So there are two nominees, one has already been confirmed, who have been speakers at the Blackstone Fellowship, oh, I see. Okay. right? Mm -hmm. So you have the Blackstone Fellowship, as you said, you know, has a lengthy reading list, which includes, or has included at least in the past, both of Sears's book, The ACLU versus America and the Homosexual Agenda. Also, two of, of Trump's judicial nominees have been speakers at this program. Amy Coney Barrett, who has been confirmed to the U.S. Court of Appeals for the Seventh Circuit, was a speaker for the Blackstone Fellowship. And Kyle Duncan, who's nominated to the Fifth Circuit, also has been a speaker at the Blackstone Fellowship. So not only does the Blackstone Fellowship produce a lot of young lawyers, and now some of them not so young since it's been going on so long, who then go on to practice law, either in private practice, but many of them go on to government service. All of this um, adds up to ADF's growing influence. I mean, you see in state attorney general's offices around the country, we found 10 that employed 18 either former ADF staff attorneys or um, Blackstone fellows. So my concern is that long after our culture has evolved to the point where you can't really electioneer around fear or hatred of minorities or people who have different sexual orientation, that the federal bench will have these people who are basically of another era. Yes. Um, and that is the great fear right now with Trump's judicial nominees. Uh, many of his judicial nominees uh, are very anti-LGBT. 
uh, and not all of them have an association with ADF, but some of them do. Uh, Co Coney Barrett and Duncan are not the only ones. There are two others who um, are ADF allied attorneys as well. And one of them in particular, Jeff Mateer, who's an attorney now with the Attorney General's office in Texas, he's been nominated to a federal trial court by Trump in Texas. He has said things like, uh, transgender children are evidence that Satan's plan is working. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's exactly what you say, right? Our, our society has evolved where a majority of Americans believe that same-sex marriage is right and don't have an issue with it, mm -hmm. yet Trump is poised to stack the federal bench uh, with judges who think otherwise. If you liked this interview and you're at the end, so apparently you liked it a little bit, thank you for watching, we really appreciate it. You can watch them live as they happen if you're a member, only members get that. Go to tytnetwork.com slash join and you get not only interviews live, you get the Young Turks live, you get Aggressive Progressive live, old school and all the commercial free. Come join us right now, tytnetwork.com slash join.